Hey everybody, it's Brandon, the Weekend Cruiser, where I go on a weekend cruise just about every weekend, except this weekend. I'm actually using some of my precious vacation time to head to the Adventure of the Seas out of Nassau. So it is Saturday morning and I am not on a cruise ship currently. So I'm getting ready to head to the airport and head to Adventure of the Seas. But as this sailing is different for me, it's a seven night versus a three night that I traditionally do. I wanted to walk you through how I pack, how I think differently for those long cruises because a three night cruise, you can forget things and you're gonna be okay, you're gonna survive. On a seven night, I'm not so sure if you're gonna make it through. So let's go through what that process looks like for me, what I'm thinking when I'm packing for a seven night cruise. If you like this content, you wanna stay informed, make sure that you're sailing on into the subscribe button down below so that you can stay informed on all things weekend cruises, all things three night cruises, and from time to time, a few of these seven night and longer cruises that I also get to do. So with that, let's jump on into it. So for a seven night cruise, the first thing that I'm thinking through is how much clothes do I need? So it's seven nights. I wanna bring about six outfits per night that is there. The one thing that I normally always forget, or maybe this is just me in my head, is I forget to count what I am currently wearing. So tonight is night one, and oftentimes I'll duplicate that in my stacks over here with the suitcase because I tell myself I will wanna change when I get to the ship, freshen up, I never do that. I've been on many, many cruises telling myself that, and I never change once I get to the ship. What I got on, this is what you're gonna see uh, tonight in the main dining room, so I'm not gonna count this outfit. But I am gonna go through, and I'm gonna pick out some of my favorite shirts. So you've seen a lot of these probably already on some of the videos. A lot of them are also the dry fit material that does not wrinkle. So because I do have to fly, it's gonna be in the suitcase here for an extended period of time, and I don't want it to become wrinkled. So most of these are that really nice dry fit kind of material that's not gonna wrinkle quite as quickly. The next thing that I always like to do is stay in the same family. I'm gonna get some leisure wear, some shirts to work out in, maybe hang out by the pool. And I take about four of these, one, two, three, I've got five of these actually. I think I've got one too many probably because um, I can rewear these. It doesn't matter to me if you see me at the pool in the same shirt that I wore two days before. I think that's another thing people get in their head on, you know, oh, somebody's gonna see me wearing the same thing. Nobody is gonna remember what you wore on day two when it is day six. They're, they're not gonna have a memory of that. So don't overthink your casual wear that you are taking with you. I'm also gonna wanna think through what are my pants options? So actually even on my last weekend cruise, I did not take jeans or my nice pair of shorts here to wear to specialty restaurants or if I wanted to do dress your best night or dress smartly. Um, so I had to wear athletic pants the entire time on the ship, which very comfortable, I recommend it. Um, but you know, sometimes I wanna feel a little bit more fancy and not wear those. From there, I'm gonna pick up, what are my actual workout? What's my leisure wear? So if, as you can see, for about every day on the ship, there's gonna be two different outfits. Sometimes those are gonna repeat, but I do wear more casual clothing in the morning, such as one of the tank tops, one of the um, easy shirts that I wear to the gym, and then I'm gonna have some gym clothes as well that I'm going to wear. And we're gonna see if I can get all this into the suitcase while we're chatting with you. If not, we have some backup plans. Shirt-wise, I'm also gonna bring some SPF shirts. So I've got two of these and they are Fantastic. So they really keep me from burning. They keep me from being in the sun too long. They're very easy to put on. I don't have to worry about anybody getting that small of my back or asking a stranger to lotion me up. Um, this is a great option for those people who don't necessarily like SPF, don't like sunscreen, um, or you just you know want to make sure that you're well covered. This is something that I can wear around the ports. I can wear it at the pool. Extremely, extremely versatile. And these are probably my favorite item that I take with me on the ship. I'm also gonna bring some bathing suits. On this one, I have four bathing suits going with me, maybe one more than what I need. If I see I don't have room, I might take one of these out. But if bathing suits get wet, you know, you can hang them up in the shower. There's gonna be a rod for you to hang something there. But I don't like putting on a wet bathing suit again the next day. I do like for it to fully dry. And I do feel like sometimes they may get a little bit moldy if you don't hang them up just right. We're all guilty of throwing something in the shower and not putting it where we need to when we get back to the room. 
Um, so food for thought on that. Underwear. Make sure that you're packing enough underwear. Um, I have certainly left for a cruise and not taken any underwear. It is not fun. Um, so make sure that you are packing this. This is one of those must-have items that you want to ensure that you are taking with you on the ship. I do take one for every single day. Just, you know, we were talking about reusing things there for a second. I will take one for every day. Um, and I also take some that I'm going to wear specifically in the gym that I can sweat a little bit more in. So from there, sun, we talked about the SPF shirts. Also take a hat. This is my Club Royale Champion shirt that I have, or not shirt. This is my Club Royale hat that I have. So make sure that you're taking something to protect your head as well. Especially if you are a gentleman and you may not have a lot of hair upstairs, you want to make sure that you are protecting that. So that's the clothes that I take for a seven night sailing. Shoes wise, I know this is always a big topic of discussion. I will take three pairs of shoes on this sailing. So I've got three different kinds. I have my everyday shoe, which is the flip flop. And I will tell you that um, I probably wear it more than I should. Some people probably don't like seeing me wear this to specialty restaurants, but I will absolutely do it because they're comfortable and I'm on a cruise. The second pair I take is my athletic wear. Always take these, even if you're like me and you like living in flip flops, you may want to do an excursion or go somewhere that's gonna require you to have a closed toe shoe. The gym on the ship certainly does, so I do take it for that, if nothing else. And this is where it's different on a seven night. I'm also gonna take a little bit fancier of a shoe because I may meet people, I may wanna to go to specialty, and I may wanna impress somebody. I don't know, it doesn't happen often. Um, but I do take it as an option if I just feel like I want to be fancy one night, just a seven day cruise, um, I might just want to put on a nicer shoe. From there, I'm going to come down here to my toiletries. So this is my toiletry bag. It is a lunchbox that I acquired from the Ritz Carlton at some point when we had a conference there. But this has everything in it that I need as this is a longer sailing. I'm having to pull out anything over three ounces because I am flying, so that is different for me. Normally I have larger toothpaste, larger toiletries. I need to remove all of those and switch them out for the three ounce and under. I'm also gonna make sure that my lotion and any of my um, smaller bottles are full. As it's seven nights, I don't wanna run out and chances of me getting some good sun on a seven night cruise is really high, so I wanna make sure that um, I'm gonna have enough lotion to make sure that I stay well moisturized and protect my skin as well as I can if I'm going to be getting some of the sun. I'm also gonna bring my electric toothbrush and the key to this is make sure that it is charged. I have certainly gone on a cruise ship and it died on day one. Make sure that if you take electronics, including your toothbrush, that you are charging it so it does not die on you and you are manually brushing your teeth with an electronic toothbrush. It's a very odd experience, I will say. Gentlemen, this one's for you. This is my beard trimmer. As you can see, my beard is pretty short right now, um, but as the week goes on, it is a seven night cruise, depending on when I would have trimmed it to start with. If I would have trimmed it a week ago and I'm just now going on the ship, if I don't take this with me, I may come back looking like a woolly mammoth. I mean, let's be honest, like it's gonna continue to grow even on the cruise ship. You may wanna look good for those pictures if you're taking family pictures, group pictures, or dressing up and being fancy with my fancy shoes down there, I may want to trim up the beard a little bit too. So make sure that you are bringing that. It is an electronic, it needs to be charged, unless you're bringing the charger with you. My iPad, I don't normally take this on short cruises because I stay so busy um, hanging out with friends, seeing what's out there, and just you know being social and getting some sun, enjoying Coco Cay and Nassau. This will have two sea days on it. I want to make sure that I am staying entertained. So I did charge this up last night. I checked my Netflix account, downloaded all of my movies that I wanted to watch or my seasons. Those do expire as well. So if you downloaded them on your last trip or your last cruise and you didn't have a chance to watch them, they will expire. So make sure that you're going in here, re-downloading those if you need to, um, and make sure that this is charged. You can clearly charge it on the cruise ship Downloading the movies though is very tough on the cruise ship. Depending on your Wi-Fi connection, that may take hours or even overnight, and it may not even work at all. So make sure that you're downloading those movies in advance. Cords. This is something that is crucial. I was just reading about somebody who left their 
um, laptop charger at home from the cruise ship just this morning. Make sure that you have a cord for every important device that you have. I've got a work laptop, personal laptop, and my cell phone charger that I will always, if I take nothing else on this cruise ship, these three must go with me and of course the advice that I attach them to. So make sure that you are pulling these out, you are accounting for them. You may even want to double check on these. This is one that will give me a nightmare scenario if I leave one of these chargers. I have done it before, I've seen other people do it. You can always try to run to the port really quick the day of if you realize it or maybe if you're in a port somewhere. But if you're going to international ports, they might not have the same connections and it's going to be really, really tricky. You may be able to find somebody on board that has a similar connection. I know iPhone's one that you probably can make friends an Android device and you know use their charger if you forget yours. Um, but again, that is stress that you do not want on a ship is to forget charging devices. You're also, to my point, going to make sure that you're bringing those actual devices. So make sure that you are putting these in your bag as well. You are double and tri triple checking things that you need. I also, because you know I'm creating these videos for you all, I have a whole nother bag just for video equipment. So I make sure everything there is charged, that I've got the right cables, I've got the actual camera itself. There's a lot that goes into that, um, but I make sure that I have it as well. So let's see if I can get everything into this bag. And if not, I'm gonna show you my backup option. If you're taking dress shoes, make sure you also have dress shocks. I forgot those. So this is why you pay attention when you're putting things in. If you have things that you need to make sure that they are connecting, such as a dress shoe, needs a dress sock, make sure you're bringing those. All right, let's see if we can close this up. Looks like it might be a stretch, but I think I can do it. Oh, toothbrush. And it's closed. One thing that I forgot just last cruise, for all of you people that uh, like dental health and taking care of your teeth, I forgot my night guard on this past cruise. I always sleep with it. So I had a little bit of problems falling asleep without it as I'm so accustomed to it. But I'm gonna throw that into my bag now. Um, it normally stays on the nightstand, so it's always great to check to make sure you have it. Now, as you see, this bag is full. I still have a few other things that I need to fit in and take with me, not to mention my technology. So what I traditionally do or have been doing recently, and some of y'all are gonna think this is trashy, but I've learned the value of a grocery bag. These things, when you are flying, handle a lot and you can put multiple bags in here and it's still gonna count as just one bag. So what I'll do is throw some of this stuff in here. I'll put my technology bag in it as well and I still only have two bags. I have my um, my normal carry-on. I guess this would be like a backpack or a purse, if you will. And then I've got my rollerboard I'm gonna put on the upper shelf um, of the airplane, pinning that it fits. If not, I can take my laptops out and that'll lower it down and then I can easily slide it right on in. And with that, I am fully packed and ready to head to the adventure of the seas in Nassau. My time I know is running out here, so I gotta call an Uber and get over there. Thank you for listening into the Weekend Cruiser. If you found this helpful, you wanna hear more information about weekend cruises, tips and best practices about going on a cruise, make sure that you are sailing on into that subscribe button down below and maybe even leaving me a comment on how I can pack better or what you've done that makes your life much easier when you're getting ready to go on one of these longer trips. This is outside of my comfort zone. Um, so let me know what I can also be doing better as well. The Weekend Cruiser signing off and hope to see you on a weekend cruise soon.